What's going on, everybody? It's Taylor from Rock Out Loud. I'm here with Arjun. Arjun, and uh, how long have you been coming to uh, Rock Out Loud and taking lessons? I've been coming here for a year and a half. A year and a half. And how have you been liking uh, the lessons? I think the lessons are great. Their teachers, their teachers are really fun. Coaches. Uh, coaches are really fun. <laughs> and um, it teaches a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. And what do you think of the environment? It's really cool around get here. Some free rock one over there. Yeah. Get some great stuff. Yeah. And uh, and dollar waters. Come on. Can't be, you can't beat that. Um, so what got you into you're doing drums? Yeah. Just, so just to clarify, what got you into that? So when I was little, I always loved like drums. I used to watch people playing drums. So I told my dad when I was like. 11 around there uh, or 10 i told i told them i want to start doing drums that's awesome and is there anyone that uh kind of a notable drummer that you can think of oh like like just any drummer that you yeah that you uh watched growing up or just in general that you liked that so kind of inspired you there's this girl in india her name's purva sharma mm -hmm. and my dad sh like showed me to her and she had like pretty crazy music so crazy music? also got me and that was it. like your turning point yeah, 100%. What made you choose Rock Out Loud as opposed to different So I used to, uh, I've been playing drums for more than a year and a half. And I used to have an online class. And I didn't really like playing online because it was kind of like weird. And so we kept on looking around to play near us. And we found Rock Out Loud. And we came here for our first session. It was great. Awesome, dude. Awesome. And so with drums, is that the only instrument you play? Uh, yes, I've played piano and a cahoon before. Nice. And do you do you see yourself maybe in 10, 15 years still playing drums? Yes. You do? Do you think you'll form a band at some point? I don't know. Maybe. Or just kind of doing it as yeah. a, a hobby? Yeah. A hobby? So what does your uh, friends and family think of? Family thinks it's great. And my friends think it's cool too. Yeah. Now, uh, do you ever... Show off with your, with your friends and, and show them how, how I mean, amazing of a drummer you are. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, maybe all the time. No, um, no, it's awesome. So recently, you uh, uh, you were playing Starland Ballroom. It was a month ago at this point. Yeah. And I just want to go through that. So tell me the experience, getting there, seeing the venue, seeing the stage, and so, your song. So the venue was actually the biggest stage I've been there. Mm -hmm. Because for the past three concerts, that was the biggest. And it was really cool playing there. The drum set was really cool playing there. And just thinking that was so many other popular bands that's played there, played mm -hmm. on that drum set. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a humongous stage compared to, I mean, Stone Pony, in which you've played. Yeah. Uh, did you like the Stone Pony as well? Stone Pony was nice. It was nice. Comparing the two, Stone Pony, Starland. I think Starland Ballroom. Star better, it takes yeah. the win, yeah. So, and, and why is that? Because it's just like, it has more of a vibe to it. It like, does. It does. It definitely kind of captures what you would imagine, you know, like a concert would yeah. look like. You know what I mean? Um, and it's cool because the month prior to the show, Benson Boone played. Actually? Uh, yeah, he, he was on that stage performing Beautiful Things. And it was coincidentally enough, you know, it, he performed there. And then a month later, we performed that song. The students performed that same yeah. song. Um, it was very cool, and uh, everyone was was just kind of raving about that when they found out he played there. Um, but yeah, a bunch of people played there. I mean, Metallica, if you look on their website, Metallica played there. Greta Van Fleet, Blink-182, a bunch of people. Uh, but what song did you play? I played a song called Burning Up by Burning Jonas Up. Brother. Yes, and that was, in my opinion, one of the best grooves within the set list. Yeah. That was... I mean, it's just such a sick groove. And when we first started learning the song, was it challenging at all? It was. It was really a bit challenging. challenging. But yeah. once I started like getting and listening to the song more, I understood it more, and it really came easy to me after. Yeah. So besides the Saturday rehearsals that we were doing, how did you prepare for the concert? So I would just put my AirPods in and just listen to it mm -hmm. a lot. I'd have it on my playlist. I would just listen to it on repeat sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I would just practice it at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. The groove and like Everything. just play the song. Yeah. Because one thing, of course, I always say is just to listen to the song. You know, that, that will always help uh, memorize and such. So before you went on stage, was there any nerves? No, no. nerves? 
not nervous at all. What, what about when you got on the drum set? No, nothing. And so it's how like, do you how do you block out the, the, those feelings there? So it's just like you just think that you're gonna do great and everyone's gonna love it. Like I who love cares? That. What I they love think? that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah, I mean, yeah, a hundred percent. I love that. Uh, so after the show, how do you think you did? I think I did great. You did do great. What did your family think? Family think I did great too. You did great, yeah. And so of course we have another show coming up. Really? Stone Pony. Right. Uh, that's November, right? November seventeenth. So yeah, I saw the board out there. Do you think you're going to do that one? Definitely. So it might not be like the Starland Ballroom, in which yeah. your experience there was overall really nice. Really nice. And would you want to do that again? Definitely. Starland. Yeah, there's a lot of people love the Starland, um, but with the Stone Pony, there is a, a, a different vibe there. It's yeah, kind of it's like, like it's like like a, it's like a more rock vibe. Yeah, and yeah, it's definitely uh, it's a little more. Back to, yeah, a little more intimate. That's the, yeah. yeah, right. It's a little more squishier, you know, it's kind of packed together, you know. And so, <laughs> but but I feel like that's kind of what makes it better, almost. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you can get really sweaty because of, you know, it gets, you know, a lot of people are in there. But again, you're going with the show. But it's the show and it kind of, you know, it kind of feeds into the vibe of the whole thing. So, do you expect yourself to play that? Definitely. 100%, yeah? Yes. And. Is there any song or, or or band that you would like to hear? Uh, I would like to play Michael Jackson. It's one Michael of my ja favorite. Nice. And so you did a Michael Jackson song before. Yeah. You did. Um, smooth, smooth Criminal. Smooth Criminal. Yeah. You did Smooth Criminal. That was last. So yeah, that was the last one at Stone, at the Pony. Stone Pony. And how did that one go? That was, that was crazy because like I was also nervous because my only my second one, mm -hmm. and honestly my first concert it was like it was the Pretender. The Foo Fighters. Mm. It was that was I was hella nervous. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's a hard song, by the way. The Pretender. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Smooth Criminal, by the way. Those, those these are not easy songs to play. Uh, Smooth Criminal and Burning Up have a similar. Yeah, because uh, it's like kind of fast, but fast, like it goes together. Goes together, and it's sixteenth notes. Yeah. So, um, you did a great job with all the performances you, you you've done, you. whether at the Stone Pony or the Starland Ballroom. Um, do you have any a, any thanks you want to give to anyone? I would like to thank you for teaching me. Hundred percent. I'd like to thank my dad for sending me here and just helping me with this. Hundred percent. I make one important point. You said you don't get nervous anymore. Not anymore. You said the pretender. You were like I really, was, really nervous. Yeah. And then you said Michael Jackson's smooth criminal. You're like real. But now the confidence that you built in a year and a half is amazing for you to say that you played the Starland Ballroom. 600 people, by the way, and not feel nervous. That's a huge accomplishment. So I want to give you some Thank you. Thank you. So, would you do you have any advice for anyone that that may be extremely nervous going on stage? I think just don't like don't think of what they'll say. Just focus on what you're doing. Yeah, hundred percent. And any advice for practicing at home for just, anyone? Because there might be some people that it's don't not like, like you have to practice for hours and hours and hours. It's just you have to have a good practice. Yes. 100%. It's as long as, you know, practicing with the metronome. Yeah. Always counts. And that then, of helps course, the so song. much. So, so much. A lot of people hate the metronome. And They'll get to you. Yeah, he he knows. You, you know. You know. Uh, but yeah, that's some great advice right there. So I'm glad you don't get nervous. I'm sure the next show, you, it'll be even better. And I hope to see you at a lot more. So to wrap things up, do you, do you have anything else you, you would like to say? I think we covered everything. I think we covered everything. I really think we did. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was Arjun, and you're going to see him at a lot more concerts, that's for sure. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And if you want to see more podcasts, you can check them out. Thank you. Thanks.